It was one of those quiet days in Rhubarb's garden. A day when, if perhaps the unexpected should turn up, it would be an unexpected pleasure. In other words, there was nothing doing. Hark, said Rhubarb, as he sat in the shade of the old conker tree, reading his favourite newspaper, The Chimes, and raised an ear. Five to eleven, an early cuckoo. Cuckoo, an early cuckoo. Add it to all the other cuckoos around here, scoffed Custard, as he shuffled his pink mass into a more comfortable spot on the fence. I must write to the chimes, Rhubarb was saying quietly to himself, when Mouse strolled up. Mouse, I've heard an early cuckoo. 10.55, I'm writing to the chimes. Five minutes early, oh my, that is early, said Mouse. Cuckoo, told you. It strikes me that writing to the chimes is one's duty, harumphed Rhubarb, and enough was said. The following morning, Rhubarb was thundering through the chimes to see if they'd printed his letter about the early cuckoo five minutes early, when he was disturbed by a most dreadful noise. As Rhubarb stood up, Mole dug his way into the garden and said something about an earthquake. What followed could only be described as a rogue cuckoo. It smashed through the fence, sent poor old Custard flying, and then stood, large as life, in the middle of the lawn, quivering on its spring. Mouse, there's what looks like a large cuckoo in the garden, wobbling in the middle of the lawn. But, no, I'm not seeing things, Mouse. I'm simply phoning to say that we have a large intruder with a spring bottom. Cuckoos yesterday, a reckless parrot today, Custard muttered as he marched up to Rhubarb and demanded to know what was what. I was about to find out, said Rhubarb, but as it broke your daydream and your fence, you can ask it. Oi! said Custard, being diplomatic. What's your game? Sorry about your fence. I mistimed me landing. I'm a cuckoo looking for a job, preferably in a cuckoo clock, sniffed the cuckoo. Uh, do, 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 do you speak cuckoo? inquired Mouse idly as he sidled up behind Custard. Cuckoo? Oh, ah, yeah. Cuckoo? nodded Custard. Me timing's all out, blurted the cuckoo. By five minutes, it groaned. Oh, dear, said Rhubarb. Well, perhaps we could help. Perhaps we could reteach you the time. Mouse here is pretty well up to the minute on timing and stuff. What do you think? Cuckoo, said Custard. It seemed like time had stood still as Rhubarb and Mouse waited for an answer from the bird. I ain't got nowhere to live, neither, blurted the cuckoo finally. Leapt out of every clock I ever lived in. I can't help it. My spring's too strong, it sniffed. <laughs> Rhubarb looked terribly sad indeed as the cuckoo wobbled among what was left of the fence and wailed. Well, look, perhaps you could live in my shed for a while. You could relax, unwind, get adjusted, learn to tell the time, so to say, quipped Rhubarb. Cuckoo, cuckoo muttered Custard and wandered about, picking up splinters of broken fence as he went. It's been in there for hours, said Custard, as a little group of chums sat in the shade of the old conker tree and Mouse scribbled furiously, trying to work out how best to adjust the cuckoo's cuckoo. We've got to give it time. For goodness sake, it's a cuckoo, Rhubarb and Custard bantered when Moggy Malone turned up with Poodle Princess. Ah, oh, there you all are. I hear the cuckoo, cuckoo, chirped Moggy, and Poodle Princess made extremely theatrical listening poses. You could have heard a clock tick. Cuckoo! You didn't hear it, Moggy went on, and the chums said nothing. Ah, well, shrugged Moggy. I wanted the shed for singing and drama, remember? She smiled and then added a blank look. There's, there, there, there's something in there, squeaked Mouse. Something in there? Moggy stared while Custard strolled off. Uh, yeah. What did he say? asked Moggy. He said cuckoo, Rhubarb explained. There's a very large cuckoo in my shed and it won't come out. Why not? B -b 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 because it's not time yet, said Mouse. You're pulling me leg. A cuckoo in Rhubarb's shed won't come out because it's not time. How fantastic. A cuckoo? Exactly. Exactly. 
Oh, I've never seen a cuckoo. I'll coax it out, said Moggy excitedly, and she skipped off over the garden and banged on the shed door. Cuckoo! Oh, cuckoo! I'll have an I'll puff, darling, said the princess. Cuckoo! Don't be shy! I know. Let's pretend it's four o'clock. I'll count to four, then you can come out. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Before Moggy could count to four, the shed door flew off its hinges, the cuckoo flew in past her, and with one mighty spring, he took off over the garden. Seconds later, there was another broken hole in the fence. Now I'll never see it. Ne'er gaze upon the first spring cuckoo, darlings. Poodle Princess wailed melodramatically. Oh, stop being so dramatic. Oh, look, it's coming back, said Moggy Malone. Cuckoo, over here. Yoo-hoo, cuckoo. Right on time, beamed the cuckoo happily. <laughs> I think I'll write to the chimes, chuckled Rhubarb. It was a gloriously warm day, and news of Rhubarb's garden party drifted on the balmy summer breeze. Whispers were heard that Rhubarb's marrowbone jelly cakes were on the menu, while rumours spread that Custard had ordered chocolate-coated eels. Whose name would be on the official pecking order? A personal invite to this scrumptious soiree. And who would wait for crumbs, if crumbs were to be had? The party was on, the weather unseasonably hot. It was so crowded under the old conker tree, to say the least. Cool, said Moggy, and as she picked up the old teapot, its handle snapped off. Real cool, eh? said Rhubarb in a being cool kind of way. Handle snapping off like that? Don't worry, it was just an old crackpot. Like me, <laughs> he sniffed, and the birds laughed pitifully at Rhubarb's old crackpot joke. Oh, Bob darling, you're so droll, said Poodle Princess dramatically, and picked up a plate which snapped in half. Oh, alas, poor platter, she dramatised, and Rhubarb acted as if it didn't matter. As Custard raised a cheery mug to Poodle Princess's acting, up went a cheer from the crowd, and down went the mug with a crash. Oh, I, I, I see we're having a really smashing t -t -t time here, chirped Mouse, and everyone groaned. Smashing time! That is so funny, tittered Rhubarb, and picked up his broken tea things. Half a cup, anyone? He exploded and could hardly stand up. Cracking jokes at my expense, he shook. Well, I'm shattered, he spluttered. Shattered! <laughs> I think Rhubarb's finally cracked up, said Moggy Malone. Well, the garden party is certainly broken up, sighed Poodle Princess. Uh, right, uh, tea at four o'clock on the lawn, squeaked Mouse as loud as he could. What about caps? wailed Custard. Pottery, said Mouse. We'll make a new tea set. A tea set? But we don't know anything about pottery, Rhubarb said. The computer does, chirped Mouse. We'll look it up. And with that, Rhubarb, Custard and Mouse made a beeline for the shed. Mouse startled the computer from the deep sea, Custard gave it a shake, and Rhubarb looked up P for pottery. Next, he was on his bone phone. Hello, Mo? Ah, oh, can you help? We need clay. Heaps, so's to say. As soon as you can. And we'll need a pur pur potter's wheel, squeaked Mouse. I'll think of something said Rhubarb in a thinking kind of way, and stepped out of the shed and fell over the bird bath. Perfect, he beamed. A perfect potter's wheel. We're going to make a new tea set, announced Rhubarb. Afternoon tea under the old conker tree at four. Complete new tea set, said Mo. You'll have you jogging for hours, running that potter's wheel. Mouse shook his head. Uh, no problem. Engine? Rubber band, engine does the work. Computer control, mm, mm, mm. nothing to go wrong, he explained. There's clever, said Mo. 
and Rubau asked if there was a bit too much clay for a tea set. No, said Mo. You'll need all of that, mark my words, he said. Shrinkage and whirling, see? Well, if you think so, Mo. Turn her on, shouted Rhubarb. Turn her on, echoed Custard. Turn her on it is, squeaked Mouse from the shed, and the new tea set was on its way. Slowly at first, the mountain of clay began to turn on the bird table. It's working! It's working! shouted Rhubarb in a pleased as a potter kind of way, and the garden animals stood around as the clay mountain wobbled and turned and picked up speed. <laughs> oh, isn't he just the most wonderful potter, darling? gushed Poodle Princess in a one artist to another kind of way. Wonderfully potty, shrugged Moggy. As the clay gathered pace, Rhubarb, Master Potter, held his paws up with a wet mass and soft, wet, earthy dollops flew from the turning block. Moggy copped a splash first, then Princess caught one. Rookie got a splodge too. The birds didn't lose out either as the giant wobbly teacup reached a menacing speed. I think it's a bit big, shouted Rhubarb above the clatter of the wheel and dug his paws deep into the squishy clay. As he did, the stuff flew wide and far, and there was plenty of love. Ahoy there, Custard! One lump or two! <laughs> Chortled Rhubarb, as Custard was covered in enough clay to mistake him for a large ornamental china cat. Everyone was covered in clay, just where they stood. And when Rhubarb noticed what looked like Mouse standing by the shed, he begged for him to turn off the wheel. Can't! squeaked Mouse. Stir! Stuck! And the pottery wheel whirled and clanked around the clock. As the sun <sighs> came peeping up over the old concretry, the diesel engine finally sputtered and gasped to a stop. And Rhubarb was able to take his worn down fingers away from what now looked like a miniature egg cup. When he looked up, a concrete gnome army, the grenadier gardeners, seized at him. Their heavy clay overcoats set solid. It was dead quiet. Ah, uh, I can't put the kettle on, said Rhubarb nervously. <laughs> Rhubarb's alarm clock was ticking away peacefully, enjoying the moment, having a lie in. Rhubarb was already up and about. He'd finished his baked bones on toast and had already started his day by measuring, sawing, hammering and smoothing things over. Curiosity finally got the better of Custard, who had slipped off the fence and strolled over. I know you're going to ask, said Rhubarb through a mouthful of nails. You've got that look. Yeah, well, OK then. Uh, what are you doing? I'm making things smooth, explained Rhubarb. <laughs> More like rough, as you dogs would say. <laughs> Custard tittered. There, perfectly smooth. Not a lump, a step or bump in sight. Ah, now for the rest of the garden, said Rhubarb, ignoring Custard. Here, where are your steps? inquired Custard. Steps are a thing of the past. Believe me, my dear cat, we are about to enter the smooth age. Mark my words, it's cool to be smooth. Come on, Mouse. Now look here, what is all this about? And what is that mouse doing with a fur dryer? Custard wanted to know, but Rhubarb and Mouse were too quick. The shed door was closed. Uh. Smooth talking dog, muttered Custard and sulked off. That afternoon, an army of filthy looking weasels arrived and smoothed all of Rhubarb's garden. There wasn't a step left to be seen, neither up nor down. When it wasn't flat, there were ramps, smooth, modern, and bump free. <laughs> we're about to enter the smooth age, Custard mimicked as he wandered into the shade of the old conquer tree where Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone were in the middle of a theatrical makeup session. Wow! Now that is what I call smooth, whistled Custard. Oh, you are a one, said Moggy. 
pass me the fur dryer. Well, uh, blow me down if it's not in the shed, proclaimed Custard, precisely as the familiar sound of the fur dryer buzzed around the breezy garden. That fur dryer is the Dresden Up Box Theatre's private property. I want it back. I'll count to three. One. Moggy called and she hammered on the shed door, which was answered by the smooth tone of the bar. Good heavens! You're hovering! Correct! bellowed rhubarb above the noise. The device is, in fact, a patented rhubarb hover trouser. One-legged flying trousers. He beamed as Moggy stared open-mouthed at rhubarb and the fur dryer that was sticky tipped to a long pipe and whirring full blast. C countdown in procedure, Mouse called. Sorry, gotta go, said rhubarb and closed the shed door. As Moggy's mouth gaped wider, a siren sounded and a roof port opened, followed by a loudspeaker announcement that hover trous was about to be tested. Dead on two o'clock, the shed door opened and Rhubarb piloted the hover trous smoothly down the ramp and into the garden. Humming like a dream, the machine swirled Rhubarb all over as he grinned at the garden animals, the rather cross Moggy alone and the shepherd. Swelling with confidence, Rhubarb took up what looked like the beginning of a rather tricky flamenco dance. And with a strum of Spanish guitar, he showed the world that they know walking was a thing of the past, and there was only one way to prove it. As Rhubarb turned up the speed, the hover trousers responded perfectly as Poodle Princess clattered wildly towards him. It was magnificent to watch. The birds were wild. High now, and on the half tone, Rhubarb returned the applause to his fans. The couple's grace and magnificence was stunning. <laughs> Gaining a further rise of confidence and matching the escalating approval from the crowd, Rhubarb thought he was flying. And then, he was. The fur dryer controls accidentally nudged the hot, and the dryer's afterburner effect powered Rhubarb onwards and upwards. The fans stood as one. The roar, it was said, could be heard as far away as Barcelona. Or at least the other side of the show. Silence. The show was over. As Rhubarb's life swirled dreamily before his eyes, the smooth as silk calm took over as he seized control of the stricken hover trousers and skillfully leaning this way and that, surfing, dodging clouds, birds and treetops, he finally made an almost perfect landing. I'm in another world, thought Rhubarb in a celestial, dreamy kind of way. But no, he was wrong. With nothing broken but the rose which he presented to the exhausted poodle princess, he was in heaven. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, you are magnificent, she said. Where's me fur dryer? demanded Moggy Malone as the shed door opened. I think I've perfected hover shed, Bean Mouse wrote the scholar, as Rhubarb's shed began to lift from the ground and skim wildly around the garden. What happened to me fur dryer? bellowed Moggy Malone, and there wasn't a window for miles around. It wasn't rattling. Now that is what I call really cool, said Rhubarb. And everyone cheered. Balancing a boiled egg nestling within a bone china egg cup set upon a small bone china plate with a spoon clamped between the thumb and finger, blue marley bone pattern in one hand and a mug of tea in the other, Rhubarb shouldered his way out into the garden. It was a lovely morning. At the first stroke of spoon pon egg, Rhubarb's highly tuned ears picked up the most sensitive notes of the tango. Bit early, he thought. However, rhubarb being rhubarb, he mulled on and dug deeper into the egg and came up with an idea. Dancing! Yes, everyone can dance, surely. So dancing it is, rhubarb chirped. And as the last distant notes of the tango danced away on the morning breeze, rhubarb decided. A grand dancing competition will be held during the afternoon. 
all acceptable dance styles welcome. And that, happy dancers, means you can expect the jig, the fling, the samba, the hip-hop, country, jiving, twisting, rock and roll and general shimmying. Pre-shuffle nibbles, slap-up feast, après tango, monster prize, I thank you. Sawing, hammering, an out-of-tune big band whistling wafted from the shed for the rest of the morning. Rhubarb was building a revolving dance floor. It was his own creation, from the choice of well-sprung timber right down to the very last step, the merest dust of dance floor chalk. The jewel in Rhubarb's revolving dance floor design was the mirror-studded ball. It would remain static, while dancers revolve beneath its brilliantly sparkling diamonds of reflected light. A unique rhubarb concept. Right on time and in time with a quick step, Post Dog rapped on rhubarb's shed door. Several shifty looking weasels hovered in his wake, ready to haul the dance floor into position for the wall. <laughs> ah, Post Dog most punctual, beamed rhubarb, and the grubby hauliers shifted the dance floor plank by plank. Mesdames, Messieurs, let the dancing begin. Rhubarb's bark echoed across the garden, and the grand dance competition began in full swing. Several of the birds sat in line, ready to judge. Their scorecards, their cut du punct, lay in neat pecking order on the table in front of them. Custard huffed and puffed, but Rhubarb carried on. The first dance will be a foxtrot he announced as Raymond and his partner, Brenda, stepped onto the dance floor with judges hot on their heels. Bubble one! Here we go then, lovey, for the monster prize, eh? Wixie, Wixie, you're cool Raymond Fox, local scoundrel. Sank. Du sank. Sank sank. The silence that followed was as thick as treacle. Shoulders were shrugged and questions were asked. Nobody had a clue what that was all about. Not even the birds who'd done the judging. And that's the way it was as more dancers shuffled their way onto Rhubarb's patented dance floor for the next step of the procedures, so as to say. The music invaded, the dance floor set off again. I've had enough of this, darling, decided Poodle Princess. Me too, agreed Moggy Malone, and they marched right up to Rhubarb's shed and waltzed in without knocking. Oh, yes, said Rhubarb. Don't blame Mouse. After a short break, Rhubarb announced that due to a small technical fault that has now been forgiven, uh, repaired, so let's enjoy... Rhubarb was waffling when the loudspeakers crackled and rock and roll started and drowned him out. Surprise. A magnificent set of savages, 100 in all, Rhubarb announced proudly, then dished up an ear splitting stretch, followed by some tinny old waltz music. The artistic effort for the prize seemed at first like a tie between Moggy Malone and Rookie and Poodle Princess and Custard. But when they heard what the monster prize was, that's when Custard started his weird spanner dance. And that's when the dance floor started playing up once more. And that's why Custard finally won the prize. As Mouse's amplified squeak was heard over the loudspeaker, the dance floor chained here and the music followed. Within seconds, the dancers on the outer edges went to fly off, while those in the middle simply went dizzy. In a rare act of incentive, Custard sprang into action, grabbed the prize bag of spanners, and threw the whole lot into the works. The dance floor stopped. Everyone took a tumble. And so, without further ado, with this mangled spanner from the works, 
I pronounce Custard as outright competition winner and hero, beamed Rhubarb, and everyone cheered. Shall we? How about making the crystal ball? We vote, suggested Mouse. We could try it, said Rhubarb. Whiz! The home of ABCs, 1, 2, 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find kids' TV. Or I can press this microphone. Whiz. That's how easy it is.